So today we are going to talk about multidimensional testing workflow and actually we are going to talk about a lot of things regarding continuous integration in our development workflow. So let me introduce ourselves. My name is Yuri. I am working for company FFW. Uh, I'm coming from pro people part of this company and this is my colleague. I am Andri. I am DevOps architect. I'm coming from uh, Pro People 2. Currently, we are FFV. Yes, and one of our responsibilities are managing development teams. And like we have a couple of teams that I'm leading, and some of challenges that we are working in uh, during execution of our projects, we are going to cover. And I would like to show you how we have improved all our development workflow and how we have managed to do a lot of testing during our development before actually things get committed and pushed to repository and appearing on our staging environments and so forth. So first I would like to talk about some historical things like how usually development workflow happens. Uh, I have been working with Drupal for like six, seven years, I worked with a lot of different teams and now I'm kind of person who is managing very, very different teams and I'm getting involved in all the workflows and I know a lot of how people used to do things. So first, we, we are not talking about really, really old workflow when we had FTP server and just pushing the code through FTP. We are already on the stage when we are using some sort of version system and uh, usually how it happens, so if you are not a single developer, right? If you have several developers, they usually have some sort of central development server where they can configure the site, where they push the code, and sometimes it gets automatically deployed to the server. And like some companies, they have their own server somewhere in the back of the room and some companies are using the some SaaS solutions like hosting and like Acquia, Pantheon, and there are like a lot of them. And this workflow has a lot of different elements. And for example, when we are working with the code, um, like one of the scenarios is that we have some SVN or Git. We all commit to that master branch and we push the changes um, and we get them immediately deploy it to our development environment. And this is where we have all our changes. We see the merges. If we have conflicts, we resolve them. And something like code review getting very tricky because like when we have a code, it's already in master, it's already deployed. So if we see something like bad, we need to roll back. And sometimes by the time we're doing code review, there are not only one commit happened, there were like multiple commits and they're like stacking one on other and maybe we already got some dependencies and sometimes this rollback process, it's fairly complicated. So this is how it usually happens. There is another aspect of development of Drupal websites is configuration and because we need to deal with the database, it's also very interesting because multiple people have single database that is on like development server and they do some configuration changes. And usually that happens on the development server. And again, if something gone wrong, we understand that something gone wrong like last week and we need to roll back or do the changes and database is already messed up. And if we need to roll back, we of course we have some backups, but if we roll back to some backup, we already lose some work that has been done afterwards. And another bad thing about doing so is that we have different configuration that we don't track. So sometimes we don't know when that change has happened and it's hard to review things. So for example, if my colleague has changed the view that I'm depending and I realize that something happened to the view and my display is broken and I'm changing this view and my colleagues start screaming like, oh, you have broken that view on my display. And this kind of conflicts is pretty hard to manage if everything is happening just by click work on development server. 
some other problems. Uh, when we have a single server, usually how it happens like with the small teams, when we have multiple projects, all the projects are running on the same environment. And for example, if you will, s if you will have several teams who are working on different projects, once you start eating all your resources of the server, for example, on migration or, I don't know, some other very intensive jobs, like all office will <laughs> start screaming at you, basically. And this is the problem of sharing resources on the single development server. Also, when you do development, your developers are using their local laptops, desktops, and sometimes it's pretty hard to reproduce the environment that you're going to work on the hosting. Like some projects, they have uh, different versions of PHP, configurations, Apache Solar, when you start running into configuration of Varnish. Uh, you cannot really find the worst task for junior developer than actually ask him to configure your production environment. That will take him like a long time. So all this onboarding process is getting pretty hard with this kind of workflow. And there is another thing that is <laughs> pretty usual with teams that there is only one guy who does deployments to production. And if deployment needs to be needs to happen, all stress goes to him. So he is the person who doesn't sleep at nights, he's fixing all the production servers. So it's getting hard to do deployments as well because we have all knowledge for only one person. Sometimes it's like multiple people, but still it's pretty big risk because we don't have any automation. We really depend on people. And that usually, well, sometimes it fails. So it's about big distance for the development and operations. And, and other things like one project requires different configuration and it starts to interfere with other projects. So this kind of problems usually teams face. How we started solving things. So first we started with the problem of local environments. Uh, we have started experimenting with Vagrant and currently we are working with Vagrant based on Ubuntu. And, uh, the way we started, we found a very nice website that called podfit.com. Uh, if you haven't used it, probably you should take a look at it. The main idea is that you can configure, like with your click works, selecting some checkboxes, what configuration of Vagrant box you like. So you can choose the version of Apache or Nginx or MySQL or PHP or and extensions and all that kind of things that will take you some time to configure manually but it does it for you. So we started with that configuration, but we ended up rewriting it basically because Puppet is doing that with Puppet. If you're familiar with this tool, it's a provisioning tool that does configuration of your servers. And uh, we were just breaking our Vagrant box too often. So we decided to switch to Ansible and we are pretty happy with this solution. Database. Uh, this is something that a lot of different teams are facing and we are now following code-driven development. So basically this is technique where you don't do any manual changes in your database at all. So you use things like features, you use hook updates, and uh, if, if it doesn't help you just put like different MySQL queries in your hook updates and in this way you configure your website. This helps us to see the changes, the actual changes that are happening, and then we can at least track who has broken things. And when we see some conflicts happening, like in feature, we can resolve them in way more efficient manner. So in our workflow that we have, we have actually two workflows. So in the beginning of the project, if it's like new project, no heritage, nothing, we start building the website as installation profile. So every time we do deployment, we actually rebuild the website from that installation profile and we see how it works. When we start having a real content, so we cannot actually reinstall because we will remove it, we call that SQL workflow. So we just have central database but we use the database only for the content. So we don't actually log in there as super admin and start changing configuration, we don't do that. Everything happens on 
code level, but we just pull the database to our environments and then we apply all our hook updates. And uh, we also run all the changes in features with hook updates. Actually, when we, some teams, they like to have features in default states, but on our teams, they, we, we just found it not very good time spending, so we just revert only features we need, and sometimes even we revert the components of features we need. So we're getting pretty granular, and features allow that to do. How our coding workflow changed. So we have switched to GitHub completely on our teams, and that helped us a lot with great feature of pull requests. Uh, pull request is basically when you have do a changes, you create a branch, and then you do your coding in the branch, and then your request changes to be merged back to master. And this moment called pull request. And nice thing about GitHub is that it's very, very handy for doing code reviews. So we shifted the code review from do it afterwards it has been merged to do it before changes being merged to master. So we have, we always have not only one person working on the project, so at least two, and they do code reviews of each other. And of course, if there are three, four, then it's much easier. And we also solve another issue that is very important, that we solve the, well, kind of solving, the issue with knowledge sharing with the project. So there is no such situation when there is only one person know what that code does. And it's very important because like, people rotate, they leave for the vacation, they come back, and especially in our environment when we have a lot of teams in FFW, uh, sometimes like we have downtime in one team and people, like guys starting to help on other projects and then, oh, they got a new project, they just run, around, run away from the project. So it's it's very good idea to have uh, code review, so really a lot of people understand how your code works in general. Um, another thing that we have started using is the continuous integration. Uh, by that I mean we have Jenkins, uh, we have GitHub plugin for Jenkins. Uh, what it does, it allows you to do a job, it has a trigger for the job that is pull request. So when we have a pull request, we can trigger some jobs, and what we do for that we run all the code style checks. We have a lot of JavaScript, lint, CSS, SAS, lint, like all of these kind of checks. And if, they f if any of them fails, or depending on our configuration, of course, if something fails, like build marked failed, so we don't allow actually bad code to be merged. We have pretty strong gates for that. And Another thing, we have some scanners for security, and that is another static analysis of the code. And another nice feature that we do is we spin up environment based on the pull request. So actually, our QA people, they are able to see, okay, this is the pull request, this is Jira issue, this is how it should work, and this is the URL that we can, that we can actually open that has all the changes from the pull request. So we can log in there, test the functionality, from user experience. Because like developers, they are very optimistic, they are very fast, they really like their job, and for example, if Ticket has three paragraphs, you usually end up developer reading first two and he start coding. And <laughs> in this way, like if his friend developer, because he's exactly the same guy, right? So <laughs> he's checking first two paragraphs and of course nobody reads the third. Oh. And what happens then, QA person starts checking, and QA people, they are really like boring, these guys who are actually reading all the words, and then they start like, oh, this is not done, this is not done, you should like finish the job, and then we can merge it. So that is pretty common problem, and pull requests are really helping that, because it's not very good experience for your clients when you de deliver not finished tasks, because like, if you have a sprint, it's better to say like, we haven't completed that functionality yet, than to actually deliver just half of it, and half of it will be broken. Then to switch to SQL-based flow, to keep all those, all those content uh, within your database. It can be done uh, by passing a variable 
to uh, reinstall .yaml playbook call, name it uh, pp environment staging and everything becomes uh, rebuilt from database uh, from the uh, continuous integration server and the uh, third uh, thing is when you are trying to connect continuous integration environment to already uh, to the real project being developed not by maybe a team this phase should have some rules like you should um, uh, you should make all those security checks code style checks optional because uh, at the start you will get something like two or three thousand errors that is impossible to fix in one pull request uh, we call it lazy fixing okay and a few words about responsibility uh, responsibility being shifted from operational guys to development te team itself because all those scripts sniffers reinstall.yaml and tests uh, being stored with uh, this uh, with the, the project itself uh, development uh, any guy from development team can uh, change uh, the process uh, at, a, at any stage uh, at any step just by creating pull request and changing uh, that script in the middle of the project when when uh, the project has such uh, uh, has such need and uh, uh, there is a magic when uh, uh, you don't need uh, really operational guys because uh, those guys are not familiar with the project you should spend a lot of time to uh, to pull them uh, push them a task to uh, uh, with this approach uh, team members can do pretty much the same as operations uh, and more effective and of course uh, we have a bottlenecks because we have a strong dependency from github when github is down you can do anything because you can do pull requests you can uh, you can't clone a repository uh, when CI server is down, you can uh, you can't obtain builds, so you can create pull requests, you can do manual code review, uh, but uh, there will be no builds. Uh, also, there is a issue, there are issues when you are trying to inject new developers into the team because they are not familiar with this workflow, and you should spend some time to. Uh, uh, for st to study them. Uh, also, DevOps must be a team member. You know, DevOps is more than seniors because they sh uh, not only good coders but uh, they are good administrators of the servers. Uh, sometimes uh, there are a lot of battles between developers at the manual code review step because you know uh, code style differs from guy to guy. Uh, and when your project is large, uh, your builds uh, uh, become slow because when your database is huge, you need to pay attention to optimize that step to remove some non-needed data because every time you, when you try to import 10 gigabytes of MySQL, you will take forever. Uh, you will uh, wait forever before you will obtain your build. Also, you need uh, to empower your uh, local environment with a good decent desktops because uh, you know Vagrant uh, uh, is it consumes a lot of disk uh, speed and uh, with SSD it's good enough to use and uh, uh, the last thing is more about project management the minimal task is uh, more than one hour uh, well, you can do hot fixes. You can create pull requests to production uh, branch, but uh, after that, after th change uh, deployed to production, you need to create uh, the same pull request to staging and to development for uh, keeping uh, changes for future. So uh, here is a list of links. 
the first link is to the uh, project itself. We made it open source to f for DrupalCon. Uh, two links to documentation. First link is about the CA box itself. Second one is about reinstall script because it's complicated script. And a uh, few presentations that shows our continuous integration from different uh, sites, from uh, previous uh, camps and cons, and a few blog posts. Jeff, are you here? No, when you meet this guy at DrupalCon, you may uh, tell him a lot of thanks because uh, uh, we've been using maybe uh, 50 uh, fifty percent of his roles uh, with, with our uh, workflow uh, for installing my SQL lamp stack uh, thanks Jeff and please evaluate us and if you ha have any questions please You can use a uh, microphone. Yes. So the question was about presentation being online. Yes, we're going to post it. And this session is being recorded, so you will be able to see all the uh, stuff multiple times. And also I wanted to add that we are very interested of other people giving this thing a try. We currently, uh, we have multiple offices and currently three of our offices start using this workflow. Uh, we already said that we have already in production like 10 to 15 projects and now all our teams are starting our projects with this tool. But different companies, teams, they have little tweaks that we are happy to incorporate. So it will be great to have some feedback from you guys as well. Okay, question. We will repeat the question. Okay, so let me repeat the question. So the question is about how that works with the clients when they want to do some changes and how I think they are using this system. So first of all, we're really not encouraging them to go to coding level and mostly we are dealing with clients that don't do much coding themselves. But anyhow, when we show them the system, uh, it's if the developers are pretty good and we usually deal with these guys, they can pick up things fairly easy after we did a couple of tries. But we really encourage them not to do any uh, commits directly to master branch and we still work with pull requests. And we also have cases when we have multiple teams working on the same project and we still keep the pull request workflow. Usually they don't touch the YAML files that can cause all the system to break. And when we do releases to like production environment, let, let's say to Acquia environment, we remove all the stuff before we actually push it to the environment. So we keep things clean and transparent and uh, we didn't have any problems with that workflow. I'm not sure I understood the question. All right. So the question is, 
can we use git flow workflow with git so git flow yes you definitely can use it i'm not sure how it plays with github because git flow already does all the very nice stuff with starting release applying hot fixes and then completing release and it does a lot of a lot of good things um maybe you can answer that mm -hmm. uh, you can just extend jenkins with uh, git plugin and uh, maybe <coughs> tied to some attacks or i don't know because uh, it's a little bit different from uh, the github itself because GitHub uses pull requests, but GitFlow is another thing. So uh, we've been trying to use it with different uh, kind of uh, uh, systems, and it's ready to be adopted to them. So just uh, never use GitFlow. So for the GitFlow, if we have a branch that can be pushed to GitHub, we are happy like to do everything, and it's actually the business of our developers how they manage their branches and what they push to github and what they don't so you can you can probably run all the create feature stuff with git flow commit all the things and then you can say okay this feature is ready and then you push it to the github and then we take it from there All right, then I hope you all get excited about the tool, and uh, I will. We will be very happy to discuss things further, or even give you a demo if you like. And uh, thank you very much for the attention.